given unto the Almighty God, all my father's children. Uh, I hope things are going well this New Year's, this fourth day of 2020. God is worthy to be praised. Um, and, you know, as as things wind up, as we begin the new year, uh, you know, we evaluate our life, things that we did in 2019. And we look and we evaluate and just see how we can do things better and to have a closer walk with the Lord. And I wanted to talk for a few minutes from Genesis, the third chapter. Uh, I wanted to talk and, and just how we, our mindset, um, you know, how we are influenced and uh, being influenced is not a new thing. Uh, it started from the beginning of time. And I wanted to read uh, the third chapter um, of Genesis verses one through five. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field, which the Lord Jesus made. And he said unto the woman, yea, has God said, ye shall not eat of every fruit of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And we know the word of the Lord has been blessed. And I wanted to speak for a few minutes from Look Who's Talking. We see that from the beginning, Adam and Eve, God had specific instructions for them. God gave Adam dominion over the whole world. All he had to do, he named all the animals. Eve was the mother of all living things. It was paradise. All they had to do was to eat, live in paradise, never having to work. That's all they had to do. But when God gave man the ability to ration and free will, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Free will has been the biggest enemy of man. When God gave us the insight to make our own choices, it's been a downward spiral ever since. Eve walking, don't know where Adam was, don't know how much time elapsed, but when that serpent, when he seen Eve, now think about it. They, they had so much stuff, more, they had access to more than enough. So the tree in the midst of the garden, they really didn't even have to touch it because God had gave them more than enough to eat. And it really was not their concern. But just like anything else, it says the serpent was more subtle than any other animal. And the trickery and the very, very thing that she couldn't have, that's what she wanted. That's how we are. The very, very thing that's detrimental to us is the thing we want the most. And then the deception comes in when he says that you would not die. But the minute that you eat of this, you will be as gods, knowing good and evil. And then she seen that it was good and she gave it to her husband to eat. Because you got to understand something. Sin is not ugly. Because if it was, we wouldn't fall for it. Sin dresses up. And we got to remember, when it talks about in Ezekiel, that Satan was one of the prettiest angels in heaven. But as soon as we get our eyes focused on something that we should not have, that is when we mess up. Oh, I'm here to tell you. The same thing, it's a generational curse, if you will. Plus, the same thing that happened to us, sin looks so pretty. And because we had free will, Satan still talking to us, telling us 
that the things that we should not have will not hurt us. Oh, you can have a little of this. A little adultery won't hurt you. A little crack cocaine won't hurt you. But see, what we have to understand, sin takes you farther than you want to go. It keeps you longer than you want to stay. And it costs you more than you can afford to pay. And you wind up getting deeper and deeper into it. And it's easy to get in, but it's so hard to get out. And God gave us free will. And let me tell you something. When the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, about the whole armor of God, when he talks about the helmet, because I'm here to tell you, if Satan can get your mind, let me tell you something. We have to protect our mind because if we don't protect our mind, let me tell you something. If Satan get to mind, he can make the body do anything it want to do. Because it says in Matthew, the 26th chapter, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's where we get into trouble. See, God knew we would need a savior. And that's why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for our sins. But free will, God won't force anyone to accept him. But God wants us to make our own decisions. But I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, time is winding up. We see what's happening in the political realm. And I'm trying to tell you, if we don't come back to the basis of what's going on and start getting closer, walk with Jesus, it's still just like we're just like Eve in the Garden of Eden. That Satan is still whispering in our ears. Why do we think so many churches are empty? Because that serpent is still whispering in our ears, telling us. And, and uh, let me tell you something. Satan is not saying that God does not exist. The enemy is not saying that. The enemy uses this that you have plenty of time. See, because if the enemy can think that you have plenty of time and that you can get it right later on, then he got you. Because so many times when you go out there thinking that you have time, you have to realize one thing. You may not have time to come back. That's why the words say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Today is the day of salvation. I'm here to tell you, Time is winding up. We don't know what's going to happen. But I'm telling you, we're living in the end times. And there's going to be repercussions of what's happening in the political realms. Killing people that are in those other countries. But I'm telling you, when you got a president that dare to say that he's done more for Christianity than Jesus, there's going to be repercussions. And I, you know what? The Bible tells us to be vigilant and sober to look around. And as, as I said in an earlier post, we may not know the precise time that the Lord is going to return, but there are so many signs. If you would read Matthew, the 24th chapter, and it talks about the signs of the time and the, time, and the things that's going on, the wars, the rumors of wars, the pestilence, the destruction, the disease, you know, uh, all kinds of people dying by the numbers. Whole cities getting wiped out, earthquakes and tsunamis. All of this stuff is coming to pass. And these are signs of the time. But you know what? It's just like the days of Noah. You know what? Everybody thought that Noah was crazy. That is, until it started to rain. And it's sad to say, if we don't be vigilant and sober... A lot of us are going to be the same way. We're going to be doing whatever we feel we're big enough to do. And that trumpet, that clarion call is going to come. And people are going to be left behind because they have not heeded. The Lord has been saying that he's coming back. But it's just like in Thessalonians when the people thought that they had missed the rapture. Where is the promise? Where's the promise of his return? You know what? 
The Lord is long-suffering because it's not his will that anyone should perish. But I'm here to tell you, now is the time. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't believe, and this is me, I don't believe we're going to see another 20 years. I just don't believe it. I don't believe our great our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. I do not believe the world as we know it. I truly believe the new Jerusalem is going to come down before that. Uh, this is just my belief. Because I think time has just got to the point. And if, if you remember in Genesis, when the Lord looked down and he had grieved and he was sorry he ever made the world. I'm here to tell you, I truly believe that the Lord is at that point now when he's looking that people are turned over. So many people are turned over to a reprobate mind. The very elect are deceived. There are legalizing of gay marriages, running churches. People are being led astray. You got people out grazing like sheep, following cult-like religions. All of these things are coming to pass. And all we have to do is look and open our eyes. The Bible is fulfilling, brothers and sisters, and we need to see what's going on. You know, when you get so caught in a trance, and you can't see your way. Let me tell you something. There is something wrong when the very elect is doing things that are unheard of. When you got pastors who just unbelievable things. A pastor having parishioners to drink their body fluid, saying it's holy milk. Something is wrong with that picture. And what is wrong with people to follow? It's a spirit. Because the Bible says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And things that people are allowing to go on. The man in Arkansas who beheaded a woman's children, two of women's children in front of her. Those are horrific and demonic things to show that the enemy is loose, that people have no conscience. Because you have to think about something. When Satan was kicked out of heaven, one third of the angels fell with him. And I don't know if you ever thought about this or not. When they fell, they had to go somewhere. They're loose on this earth. And they're roaming to and fro. If Satan is loose, why would we not think the one-third of the angels are not loose with him? That's why people do unspeakable things because they're under the influence. You need to be mindful. Be mindful of the things that you watch. You can lose things. Be mindful of things that you expose your children to. I'm giving you a prophetic word of God, we have to be careful. We got to keep our mind guarded because if the enemy can get our mind, sometimes there's no coming back. And we have to protect our children's minds. You know, when they put parental controls on the TVs and stuff, use those things. But I'm, I'll go even deeper than that. You know what? If your children ain't got no business watching it, I dare to say that we don't have any business watching it either. That's just the way it is. We watch things, and we joke about things like uh, we have made a, I made a post about, you know, if, if people are looking for a church like Greenleaf, I got news for you. That's only acting. That's not represent of the church. But you know what? It's sad that some of the church are coming to that. A lot of people are into that feel-good Christianity. But let me tell you, feel-good Christianity don't get you into heaven. God wants some kingdom-minded people 
some kingdom seekers, not perfect, but willing to walk in his ways and yield to him so that he can change us. Oh, we're work in progress, and we will never, ever be where we need to be until Christ comes back. But that's where that sanctification comes in, where he brings us up a little higher and higher. But we have to stay in God's word. We have to focus on his word. Taking that negative stuff out and letting the Lord in. See, a lot of people are oppressed. A lot of people are hurting. And they've got a lot of voids in their life. But you know what? You got to put God in that void. When you put God in that void, then you can have that peace that passes all understanding. But I'm just saying, you got to understand, when you accept advice, know who's talking to you. We got to understand, look who's talking. Don't accept advice from everybody. And I'm telling you, when you go to a church, get your Bible. Don't take for a grain of salt what everybody is saying, myself included. I don't ever want anyone to take what I'm saying for granted. I want you to read it for yourself. Because I'm not going to tell you anything that's not in the Bible, but I don't even want you to take my word for it. You need to know for yourself, you know, and it's just amazing how many people don't bring their Bibles to church. Bring your Bible so that you will know what people are saying. Study it for yourself. You know what? Secondhand smoke is detrimental, just like secondhand Christianity. You know what? Some people just want to be fed. They just want the word fed to them. They don't ever want to read it for themselves. But the words say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, which means you need to learn it for your own self. So study to show yourself approved. A workman need not be ashamed or rightly dividing the gospel of truth. But I'm just saying, we have to know for our own self. But it's time Take godly counsel. Make sure when you're seeking advice, you want to look who's talking. Eve, she was deceived by the enemy. And a lot of us who's been Christians for a long time, there's a lot of people been deceived. If you don't think so, why do you think there's cults? Think about Jim Jones, David Koresh, Waco. Why do people wind up being in cults? Because they're deceived. Because the word of God, what they're saying is false, but it's no, it's not real far-fetched. And it sounds so close to the truth that people can't even discern. That's why you got to know the word for yourself, to know what's truth and what's not. But understand The Bible says that you adhere to sound doctrine. But how are you going to know if it's sound or not? By comparing it to the Word of God. See, you don't prove the the Word of God by a commentary. You prove the commentary by the Word of God. God's Word is true. Because His Word says, His Word has been settled in heaven, which means it does not change. It's in heaven. God's word is what it said is. God's word is not opinions. God's word is not what we think it should be. God's word is what it is. The Ten Commandments, they're not suggestions. They're commandments. God expects us to obey them to the best of our ability and walk in newness. This is a new year. Let us be new too. Let us walk worthy. Let us bring our children to Sunday school. Let them learn. You know what? We can't be around our children all the time. Understand that. But you know what? If you expose them to the word, at least when they're away from you, some of that stuff will come back to remembrance. If you don't believe me, how many times, how many people have stayed away from church and when they got older, they went back to church because I know I go back to church because I grew up in church. My mom and dad took me to church. And we wind up going back to the church because we grew up and we we go back to our roots because that's how we was grounded. That's how we was raised. And we know where we belong. But, you know, along the way, Satan comes in and we start listening to that enemy. We start living our own life. 
We go out there and do our own thing. But you know what? The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 chapter, he said, when I was a child, I, 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 I thought as a child, I spake as a child. He said, but when I became a man, I, I put away childish things. You know what? Some of us as adults, we're still playing with toys. There's a lot of us that are still on milk that should be on meat by now. And that's what we got to grow. So I just want you to know, adhere to sound doctrine. And I want to talk for a few minutes about look who's talking. Because Satan, be aware of the enemy. And when you need advice, go to the word of God. Go in prayer. And you know what? We come to social media for encouragement, not advice. If you need advice, you go to the word of God. You go to social media for support and encouragement. And that's what I would hope. You know, it ain't nothing wrong with social media used in the right way. There's a lot of negativity, a lot of foolishness on there, but you know what, to each his own. I'm not concerned about that. What I'm concerned about, and I just pray that it can be used for good because for, you know what, it reaches a lot of people. And, and you got to go where people are, and that is my mission, to spread the gospel all over the nation to the best of my ability, that someone may come to know Christ or have a better relationship with Christ. But God is worthy to be praised and just know who you're talking to. And I just want to speak for a few minutes about look who's talking. So I ask you to look who's talking to you and make sure that you have sound doctrine and they know what they're talking about. Minister Laura Spade, Twin Ministry, Twin Gospel and Children Ministry of India. May God bless each and every one of you. May the peace of Jesus be with you and continue to enjoy your new year. And let this year be the year of your breakthrough, your prosperity. Because if you put God first, this is a new year, put God first and let him lead you through 2020. And I guarantee you, everything will be all right. May God bless each and every one of you and continue to have a blessed and prosperous new year. God bless.